Um, Palhana Podcast, back at it. We uh, took a little hiatus, didn't we, Sloan? We were on hiatus, you know, <laughs> similar to many of the great bands of our time. We took a little break, and now we uh, got the band back together, and uh, we're ready for episode five. Is it five? It's four or five. Uh, we're rounding it, up. We're rounding, rounding up. Right in that range. Right in the, somewhere in there. Single digits still. So we're uh, we're still um, growing, obviously. But wanted to get back to our people and um, just talk about some hot topics today. A lot of buzz out there in the uh, real estate world lately. I'm sure many of you have heard um, recent judgment regarding NAR. Um, mainstream media has been covering that thoroughly, um, as, as they do, um, maybe a bit misleading though, in some of their analysis of what's going on there. Um, you know, I'm sure you've probably heard from, uh, a lot of different sources out there, differing opinions, a lot of agents and brokerages and companies are coming out and kind of giving their two cents. Um, but I think a lot, a lot of people are kind of missing what this all means and and where we're headed and what's important about it all, right? Um, first thing I got to touch on is if any, did anyone look at or read the case on how this all started? Because I found it pretty darn interesting. Um, yeah, it was a it was almost, a hooey of, of sellers, almost, right? That kind of got almost together comical. And- yeah, it was, um, it was, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was like Midwest and, and the three yeah. main cases that this attorney took on. Um, if you look at the scenarios of how their listing agreements were structured, it was absolutely illegal and wild that people even operate that way. Um, so it's, it's funny that it kind of snowballed in, into what it did out of that because it's if you take it case by case, you're like, well, clearly these people were operating illegally. Um, the one listing agreement gave options that you could circle as the seller. <laughs> and the options were, I believe it was six, seven or 8%. Which commission would you like to pay? <laughs> and you circle one. <laughs> so <That's> I amazing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't quite seen a listing agreement structured yeah. that way, but, um, yeah, definitely misleading and uh, highly illegal. So not surprised there. Um, another one was the broker um, had a discussion with the client. Um, they agreed to a 5% listing fee, I believe. Um, then, you know, went through the transaction at the closing table. The seller notices on the statement that they're getting charged 6%. So clearly an error there where you have an agreement to one thing and charging another. Um, so, I mean, you know, these, there's definitely bad actors in any industry. Right. And I think, you know, obviously the real estate fees and who gets paid what is, have always kind of been a hot topic, but I mean, for the people that really understand how it all works, it's always been free market driven. It's a, you know, everything is negotiable in our business. Um, in most professional service fee oriented businesses, it's all negotiable, right? I mean, you know, I guess attorneys are one, you know, they're, they're probably the next ones that are going to get hammered here, but you know, everyone kind of, you have sort of normalized fees, you know, it's, it can't be a, a normalized fee technically, but you know, there's kind of industry, you know, accepted norms that come about over time, but it's always negotiable. And Sloan, you and I both know that, When we're dealing with clients, you know, especially a lot of our clients being, you know, very well off, very savvy, they're, they understand business to a very detailed level. And, and we're always, you know, it's, we're negotiating. Absolutely. It's, it's always part of it. Um, The fees are never fixed, Um, you know, and a home seller, just same as today as five, 10 years ago, can go out and sell their property themselves. Um, you can absolutely do that. Um, some people do that and are successful. Some people do it and they're not. Um, so there's always options, right? And I think this set, you know, basically it's a settlement. Um, you know, it 
it's not changing anything. It's always been this way. Um, everything's always been negotiable. Um, you know, stating that the MLS can't broadcast any co-op broker fees anymore. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting one. I, I don't think it ends up saving anyone any money at the end of the day, potentially. Um, you've got, you know, I, I think it's going to potentially create more confusion and potentially less transparency than before. Um, you know, the sellers have always had an option of offering a fee to a buyer broker when they list their property or not, right? It's always, it's just another tool in the tool belt when you're selling your property. Just like taking good quality media, um, just like marketing on various channels. The buyer broker commission is just another piece of that puzzle, albeit a very important piece because that fee then draws in those brokers who then have that larger buyer pool that one of them may be the right fit for your home, right? So it's, you're basically expanding your reach by offering that co-op commission. Um, yeah. Taking yeah, that it's away. A, an, it's an exposure yeah. thing. It, 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 it drives right. exposure to the property, which obviously the more eyes that get to the listing is going to yield a higher price. It's yeah. just, it's just how it works. Exactly. Now, I don't know. I don't know what the the reasoning exactly behind removing that from the MLS, but it seems that it's going to hurt the consumer, the buyer, mostly, and the yeah. seller. I mean, it's going to hurt. It, it it might hurt both sides. Just, right. Right. I mean, def definitely, potentially, the buyer is going to have a lot more, you know, issue with how this fee is going to get paid. Um, and you know, who's taking care of that fee. Um, so it'll be interesting. You know, I, I think when we look at it, it, obviously the goal is to improve, you know, you'd assume it's to improve the transparency for consumers. Um, I'll get it in some markets, maybe people, you know, weren't as aware that, everything is negotiable in this business and fees are, are negotiable. Um, you, you can always find people who would do something for less in any yeah. industry. Um, generally you get what you pay for, for sure. Um, you know, so there may be a lower quality service that will save you money, but it may not save you money, right? The fee might be less, but you may end up leaving money on the table in other places. Um, yep. 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 you know, so I, I think it, it will create more conversation around fees with both party or with all parties, buyers and sellers, which probably isn't a bad thing. I think, you know, we're going to have much more in-depth conversations with our buyer clients for sure on, you know, okay, we're starting our search. We're going to go look at some properties and our market is unique because people come here on vacation and then they just decide to look at properties one day. Right. So there right. it, it's, it's a bit different from a traditional market, but Hey, if we're going to commit, to going on this search, now you have to sign a representation agreement and we have to agree to a compensation up front. So, you know, yes, you'll, uh, you know, I, I see people popping up that are going to be like flat fee buyer brokers and there's going to be discount options and that may, you know, work for some consumers for sure. But um, in a competitive market um, like ours, I think, you know, having quality representation is still going to be very important. Um, and agreeing to that fee on the first day you meet someone is is going to be interesting. You know, it's going to be an interesting conversation. Um, and it doesn't mean that that buyer is paying you that fee necessarily. Like they're right, not going exactly. to cut you a check at the closing table and say, yep. hey, you know, okay, here's your fee for, you know, finding me the house and working through the transaction. Um, it, you know, a lot of times it's going to be written into the offer where the seller will cover that fee. Maybe there's a split between buyer and seller. Um, there's going to be all these different circumstances, but it's, it's you know, I guess it's good that it's being talked about more. Um, but I don't know if it's necessarily a more transparent or efficient system. Um, you know, we're, we're all here for our clients, right? You know, what, whatever can be the best possible process for a client in this business, that's what we've always kind of strived for. How do we make that? 
more streamlined, easier, more efficient. Um, and I don't know if this necessarily does that. Um, I think fees will fluctuate more with market dynamics. That's going to be a big one. Um, what do you mean? Like we're, we're sort of in a, a fairly balanced market right now. So like as a seller, if you're listing your property in Wailea or any of the you know resort markets we work in Maui um, today, you know if you're opting to not offer a buyer co-op commission on your listing, um, it's going to definitely impact the performance of your listing, you know, or the exposure, the potential price you can get, the time on market, all that stuff. Um, it's still quite crucial right now. I mean, it's a pretty competitive market. Inventory is increasing, albeit slowly. Um, but it's not like we're in this crazy hot, no inventory market like we were maybe a couple of years ago. Right. Um, in those situations, I see the potential option to reduce fees on the listing side. You know, if that seller knows, you know, they're they're going to get 10 offers on day one, right? Right. Um, so that's when the buyer's agent and their client are going to have to work out you know, how is that compensation working? Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going to be, you know, market dependent. Um, definitely a lot more conversation around it. Um, I don't know if it's the best way to go about it, but for, you know, as these things kind of unfold, um, oftentimes the first kind of change isn't always the right one or the best one, but you know, I, we're always open to evolution, right? Our, our, the way we operate and our team is we're always trying to push things forward, be creative, new way, you know, think of new ways to do things. And, you know, it, it, it's something that's happening and we're going to, you know, you're going to have to either evolve or die as they say. Right. Um, and after die. Yeah. And maybe that's another good point. You know, a lot of, there's a lot of talk about the, you know, real estate's always been a very low, bar very very low bar to entry into that into yeah. the industry, yeah, yeah, yeah right i don't know yeah, if i'm yeah, i'm yeah. not saying that right i'm saying it wrong but yeah what, ba the barrier of entry is low barrier to entry that's what i was looking yeah, for yeah, yeah. thanks bud yeah, yeah. um so yeah the, it, it may you know things are going to get a lot more difficult and you're going to actually have to know what the heck you're talking about when you're talking with clients now you can't just be a buyer's agent that, you know, you, you do it on your time off or whenever you're free and you go right, show people sure. houses yeah. and do it for fun, you know? Um, you know, so I think that's probably a good thing that's going to come out of this is it's going to weed out a lot of that um, in our industry. I bet the agent count in our market probably gets cut by 30, 40%. I mean, who knows? Um, but it, it's, yeah, it, it, it will make it more difficult to practice in this business, which maybe is not a bad thing. You know, that's good. Probably we need more professionalism in real estate. That's uh, that initial, that initial conversation. No, you're good. That initial conversation with the buyer is, is going to be critical. And right now it's not, I mean, it is obviously you want to, you want to make a, a great first impression, but in terms of, you know, having to, to bring up the buyer rep agreement and, get that signed and, you know, kind of talk about comp and all that stuff. It's just, it's going to be something new that we currently aren't required to do. And so those yeah. agents that aren't ahead of it and aren't willing to, like we said, adapt, I think it's, you know, going to, going to create a challenge for those agents. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you're going to have to really show value to the client up front, which is important. I mean, we, we always are trying to differentiate and show value. And I think, you know, the, the cream will rise to the top, as they say, and the people who actually are bringing value um, on the buy side, um, I think will be rewarded and will be, you know, have a broader client base because of that. Because people are going to really be more selective now on who they choose to represent them on the buy side. Um, before, it's always been a bit, at least in our market, a bit kind of funny how people come across who they're working with. Um, you know, being a resort market, a lot of people walk into an open house here. First agent they start chatting with, they end up writing an offer for them, right? And it's yep. it's there's there's very little due diligence from the clients on who's representing them um, up into this point, and that's that's going to change, which 
probably for the best. Um, so some interesting stuff. Definitely. The times they are what? changing. Is that, is that Bob Dylan? Yeah. yeah through, I had to get a little Dylan quote on there. I like, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Oh, so, so what's that going to mean for the, for the buyers, for, you know, our, our clients in our database, how is that, um, going to affect them moving forward? Do you think it's, you know, it, it may or may not affect them, right. Depending on what they're looking at, what the situation is with those particular listings, right. Cause it's all still kind of controlled by the listing side. Right. So depending on what that client is looking at, it's really only going to, change from kind of how we've been operating if for instance that property they want you know that seller decided they don't want an offer a co-op and it's like yeah. okay so now we got to work out the compensation how's that how's that going to look um because people can't work for free um and so yeah that'll be the conversation is how do, how do we do that um lots of ways you know um you pay at closing that's the easy one um you build it into your offer. So maybe you're offering, you know, whatever it is, yep. two and a half, yep. three percent yep. more than you would have offered. And that gets credited back to the buyer's agent at closing. Um, so it's built into the transaction. Um, there's talk of Fannie Freddie kind of building in financing or allowing financing of those fees as part of the transaction. That's going to have to evolve. Um, so yeah, there's, it's, it's definitely, it'll be interesting in certain cases and, and it'll be completely the same in others. So, um, yeah, definitely some new territory, but we welcome it. We're looking forward to it. I, I mean, I, I got to think that for the most part, I mean, 80, 90% of, of the sellers I've worked with the last five years, they're not, they're going to be okay with offering a co-op. I just, yeah, I think with, with through them living and operating in this market, they, they understand that you know, to maximize the purchase price that they, that they get for their property, you gotta, you gotta pay, you gotta pay the, the other agent to, to go and, and push that listing to their buyers. And yeah, it just, it, it, the ecosystem here, I think is, is, you know, going to be somewhat protected, but you know, that you are going to get those, those sellers from time to time that, um, the grindy ones. And, uh, yeah, yeah, they're 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 not going to want to pay. And you made a good point too. If it's you know if it's going to be a hot listing and there's going to be a lot of interest and multiple offers, which we're not we're not really seeing that right now. But you know, it, as conditions improve, we might. But that you know, it's it's going to get interesting. You know, within yeah. the, within the transaction and and securing deals. And um, I do think that you know creates opportunity for us as buyers agents as well to add value in that regard too. With you know competitive Absolutely. situations that's kind of what we're used to so yeah um, yeah get creative yeah, look, um you know how you structure things is going to be everything what i'm what i'm worried about and this is what we don't want to see this hurt the consumer but you know i'm worried to see transactions turn to this negotiation over who's paying what fees and it's it's going to really muddy muddy the waters um well, if, if that's a term that's holding things yeah. If that's a term that's holding things up, it's just, it seems, yeah. you know, kind of asinine, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you know, everyone's, you know, agreed on everything and you're working out this and it's just, if it starts to complicate transactions, which are already complicated enough, um, right. I'd hate to see that. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen, but there's a potential, you know? Um, but yeah, no, it's, um, it's interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. I know we're we're always trying. the The goal of this is obviously to increase transparency, as we've said. Um, but I don't know if that's really what is going to happen. So it'll we'll see how it plays out. You know. Yeah, it's it's, it's still really yeah. new, right? Like like as soon as as soon as the 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 decision came down, right, a couple months ago, everyone's just freaking out, right? Everyone's like, yeah. Well, oh it's the thing. Gosh. I mean, you get the media saying that like. Pri housing prices are going to go yeah. down. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. how, how do you, how is this going to affect, you know, we're thankfully we live in a free market. Um, how do you think this is going to decrease housing prices? I mean, if, yeah, if you're talking, you know, fees get compressed a couple percentage points, then yeah, maybe houses come down a percent or two. Is that really relevant to most people? I mean, not, 
you know, gosh, that's our appreciation over two months here in Maui. So it's like it, right. it, it the the mainstream media kind of I don't think has really grasped how things are going to evolve from this. And, and yeah. the headlines are, are oftentimes comical and and they're just not they're not portraying it the right way. I know, you know, real we're the bad guys. I get it. You know, real real estate's always had kind of this bad notion, and everyone thinks agents get paid too much and all that. But, um, you know, the ones that are really doing it right and are hustling and are are doing right by their clients, you know, it's it's not the easiest business. Um, you know, the failure rate is eighty seven percent. So, um, you know, it's who knows, right? Obviously, we're a bit biased, but um. What we want at the end of the day is that a better transaction process for our clients, and we'll see if we get that. You know, how I think uh, we beat that one to death. Um, yeah, we did. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah, jump into to some market stuff. Some, yeah, some Maui market. market. I think I think you got some numbers for us. We got you know we got some stats. How are those mortgage rates though? Oh, oh, we just we got a. I don't oh. know. It, Stock markets, you know, it's not been doing the best the past couple of days. And yeah. I think long term, that's going to be good for, for rates, you know, in a couple of months. But, you know, currently, uh, I think they, they just they just went up again, right? Yeah. I mean, problem is that the Fed did really kind of changed their tune at the last meeting. And now they're talking, you know, maybe no cuts. I mean, they, they haven't quite said that. A lot of the analysts are saying that, but they're really pulling back on their cut schedule. Um, in that, you know, the CPI came in real hot. Was that last week? I think it was last week. Um, or not real hot, but a little hot. And the problem is the housing component is the main driver of that. And they're, you yeah. know, I, I don't know. I mean, those people are way smarter than me. So I don't know. Hopefully they know what they're it doing. Just, but it, but it yeah, just seemed like they, they were predicting like, that with inflation, what it was doing, that it was gonna, it got to a point where they were satisfied with where it was. And so then the, the rate cuts were going to start happening. Like what? Yeah. Did that change? Well, we, we were, it, that's kind of where we were until the last CPI printout. And, and then it, you know, it's hot again and it, now everyone's scared that it's going to, you know, inflation's going to start increasing again. And so the feds really getting dovish on the cuts and, you know, it, it'll be interesting. We'll see. I mean, I, what do we, we're second quarter. If by the end of the year, we're anywhere near, the low sixes, I think that's a big win. Oh, for sure. Or, yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I mean, election years typically that, that, now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, seven, we're four. back up about a half a point almost. I mean, we were hovering in seven upper sixes for quite a while, kind of stabilized there, and now we're seven point four conventional. Um, tough, but it is what it is. We can't less, control uh, that. But there's less competition in the market. You know, it there creates. Is. You know some negotiating power from the buy side i mean these sellers you know their days on markets up a little bit and so um you know obviously yeah. a little negotiating power at the table but um that's kind of what I, I i'm seeing in our market here is just just things are on the market a little longer inventory is is creeping up you know it's not you know happen rapidly but yeah um, you got those inventory numbers i do new listings are up 24 percent year to date Oh, um, nice. they're not quite at where they were in 22, but they're, they're, they're 25% up from last year at this time. And, yeah. um, so obviously days on market, you know, going to be higher eight, eight to 10% higher days on market right now. Yeah. Um, a longer, a longer. And, um, and yeah, for, for some reason, uh, prices in the single family home segment are still going up. <laughs> Yeah, that's the most interesting fact, I think, <laughs> is that values are, are up. Um, but I think we got to keep in mind when we're looking, yeah, inventory's up for sure. We can feel that. Everyone can see that. I mean, the yeah, yeah. we finally got clients that have been searching for things forever, and now there's options. You know, you couldn't find a vacation rental anywhere for years, and now we've got a bunch of them available. So... Um, on the buy side, it's, I think, refreshing for the people that are actively searching. They're seeing way more options than they were. Um, but, you know, prices are holding stable. Um, I mean, they're up 
you know, it, it, it and I don't like to use the month over month numbers because they're a bit misleading, but yeah, you're, you're today. What's, their, what's our median house price right now or uh, for single family 1.3 yeah. year to date? Yeah, yeah, so 1.3 on houses, it's 13% up from last year at this time. Yeah, and condos are what mid eights, something like that. Uh, condos are 4% median sales price. Yeah, year yeah. to date. What, yeah. what is it though? What's the what's the median? Eight thirty. Oh, eight thirty. Yeah, eight hundred thirty k. Yeah, yeah. So you know, every values are still up, and and I think it's important to note that while the inventory is increasing, we're at historic lows, and so you look at our inventory levels now, which feels like a there's a ton on the market, but yeah. compared to you know five seven years ago, it's still way less, probably half. So it's, 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 you kind of got used to this like n scarce market and now we're finally seeing a little more balance, uh, which is a good thing. And everyone's like, oh, there's so much inventory, but not really, not really. Well, so that's, that's kind of the same thing with rates, right? You know, rates, they feel high just because three years ago or two years ago, they were so low. But I mean, even historically, you know, in the last 15 years, the, the rates are still fairly low. And so, yeah, um, well, maybe not low, but. About normal. average. Oh, we'll call yeah, it normal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll, normal. We'll call it normal. normal. I mean, it's tough yeah. when you're looking at your payments and people were like, I have clients that were, you know, pre-qualified a year ago, year, you know, a year and a half ago. The payments are literally double what you were looking at at the same price. And yep. you're just like, wow, that's. I know, but the price isn't the all, same as it was, as it was a year interest. ago. You know, that's, that's the crazy interest. thing. That's yeah. the crazy thing is the prices are, it's high. It's 10% higher. It's, it's higher. Not, so I know, I know you're getting the, uh, the old double whammy there. Um, yeah. so that's obviously what's putting pressure on the market and it's tough for people to swallow. I get it. We get it. Um, I'm dealing with it right now. I'm like, I'm getting some financing right now. Oh, yeah, you are. You are it is, uh, house, brutal, brutal yeah. construction loan rates are suboptimal right now. We're, <laughs> We're looking at, you know, eight and a half, you know, it's just, it's tough, but it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's a temporary problem, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's hopefully things are going to shift and, uh, those will come down. Um, hopefully we get that soft landing. Everyone's been talking about yeah, planes just going to glide in, yeah, where... glide in and just touch down and, uh, no issues, no turbulence. I don't know. I mean, typically, typically election years, you know, the rates go down like, right. Yeah. You yeah. think that the guy in office right now would want rates to start coming down to help his chances of staying in the chair. Yeah. You know, so I, it's funny, funny points on, I literally, I, you'd assume this, I would, you'd assume that, right. I right, thought right. the same exact thing. And then I was listening to, uh, Blue, the Bloomberg podcast and, they actually were saying that it's it's actually a reason they're they're going to be more conservative on the cuts because of the election season so that they don't screw up. So they think it's worse if they were to cut right now and then let's say, you know, inflation starts creeping up, it's going to turn into a total shitstorm in the media. Um, and it'll give the opponent an advantage. So they're they're saying that they actually are more conservative at this time because of the election season, which I thought was interesting. You think that you is would interesting? Wanna, you know, I mean, it it makes sense, but it does make sense because um, I mean, they're gonna the, the media is worried about gas prices and the cost yeah. of milk and bread. You know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so if, if you go and are a cut, hot topic, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you cut and then it's the wrong move, that's like a bit, that's a massive risk. So, so I don't know. I mean, bottom line, rates are probably going to be hanging in this range for a bit. So get used to yeah. it. I mean, it's got to affect pricing if the rates are where they are lo longer term, right? It, it has to. There's just, yeah. Yeah. And we've seen some sign. I mean, it's not really showing in the data, but we're seeing some softening, a little more negotiating going on. Buyers definitely have more leverage than they have. Um, obviously every market's different. So we have, yeah. you know, we've got our dynamics. Um, we're seeing, I'm seeing more all, price reductions. Like th there's, oh my there's been yeah. lots of price reductions and whether yeah. that's because, you know, sellers came to the market in, in a 
a little bit of an unrealistic price point or if that's just kind of the market telling them what the market tells them it just i don't know but um we are seeing just a lot of price reductions i feel like every morning my yeah. email is just filled of price reduction a lot of vacation rentals um reducing the price right now um you know those yeah. good single family homes seem to be still selling at a at a pretty high clip you know if it's for sure especially at the high end man i mean yeah high end still pretty robust um I guess that means that, you know, the wealthy are still wealthy, which I think we all knew that everyone, um, you know, I feel like this, this semi recession we've been in this kind of inflationary environment, um, the people who are getting by, you know, month to month and are struggling are feeling it a lot more than the people who are invested and have, you know, are, have kind of seen the gains of last year's market and, and everyone's kind of sitting pretty cash flush um, at, you know, those those higher net worth levels. Um, so it's it's kind of this split in, you know, the demographics that are, you know, people are experiencing very different things right now. So it's it's interesting. Um, yeah, that high seeing, end. Um, you still seeing a lot of cash in the market? A lot of Cash yeah, I mean, it, it's it seems, and we don't get this data monthly, but it seems like higher percentage of the transactions right now are cash, and it's probably because yeah. anyone who's getting a loan doesn't want to get a loan, <laughs> so they're they're you know they're finding other ways, um, or they're parking money, you know, parking yeah. cash. We see a lot of that in our market, um, you know, putting in getting it into a high appreciating market, let it ride for a bit. Um, get a you know decent return on it so we've you know those are kind of the main buyer pool we're seeing especially you know in like wailea and in the higher end areas um for sure um big rumor out there bud we got a big rumor we got to talk about it. we're talking about high-end stuff potentially the highest sale ever on maui uh could be in contract house in mckenna um oh the malawaka project. yeah 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 Talks of being around 50 mil potentially. So we'll we'll see how that shakes out. But just the rumor mill going. Um, absolutely exceptional home in one of the best locations you could ever ask for. Um, so it warrants it. But be interesting to see, you know, if that moves and if, you know, what that number is and what that kind of does to things. Um you know, we've had clients looking in the 15 range, 20 range right now. And, you know, there's a, there's definitely some hesitation and everyone's kind of wondering if it's the right time to make the move. Um, but there's some competition. You know, there's there's people looking at that stuff right now. And oh, that 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 price point is uh, very competitive because, I mean, yeah. Th yeah. there's not a ton out there. And what is out there that it's, you know, it's very, very scrutinized. And yeah, it, yeah. So interesting, interesting times in the market. Um, we're still we're still staying busy though. Oh yeah. 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 We had a big big Q1. I think we closed over 30 mil Q1. So that's nice. We like that. Q1 was good. Sloan just had a closing, beautiful Kula 200 home. Yeah. Your clients are clients gonna, are, they're amped. Dude. Work on that one, right? They're going to Yeah, they are. They, they they got people living in there doing the work right now. It's uh, Yeah. Doll, that's gonna be really doll, nice. doll that one up. Yeah. We're nice. we're working on one right now Ooh, together, yeah. you and I. Yep. We got, yep. We're... We got a off market transaction. See who you work with matters. Um, <laughs> we uh yeah, Sloan and I had you know we put two parties together. I had a potential seller, and he had a buyer looking for something similar to what I had, and we you know put the two parties together, made a deal, and yeah, now we got a now we got a transaction off market, and that's you know not to come full circle. But, you know, in all this fee talk and who's paying what and all that, that's where it's really, you know, the, the, the rubber meets the road is, you know, if the people that are working for you are going the extra mile and trying to dig up what you're looking for or trying to dig up that buyer if you're on the sell side, um, you know, it's that's what makes this business go around. And that's where you will really experience the difference in your representation. Um, I don't know how many clients we've had that, 
you know, looking on the market, can't find anything, can't find what they're looking for. And we go dig it up one way or another and find a good fit for them and, you know, make it happen. And that's, that's, that's a hard thing to do. Um, and that's really, it's going to be increasingly important, I think. So, um, we call it the, uh, the Villa group difference. Yeah. Yeah. It's what it, it's what it is. It's, yeah. you know, be, being the person that, you know, just makes it happen. It's, it's a lot of fun. That part yeah. of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, now that we had our full circle moment, we, I feel like we, was like we planned that and we just tied it all together and wrapped it in a nice little bow. Um, we did. So we're, unless we got anything else, we're probably signing off for this one, but we promise we're going to be, we're going to be back at it much sooner this time. We're going to try and make this, you know, a weekly bi-weekly thing keep you guys in the loop on what's going on and um yeah we're gonna we're gonna try and keep it going can't wait sloan allison thank you for joining me today Patrick. Tahana, Pod Tahana podcast signing out you the man